Hi parents, it's Robin McMahon here. I wanna talk about the uncomfortable. I wanna talk about what happens when there is a shooting. How do we keep our kids safe? I can tell you that every time I hear of one, no matter where I am in the world, it adds to anxiety that I already have about my safety, my children's safety, and I know that it does for you as well. And I don't have all the answers, but I do know someone who can help us to keep our kids safe and teach our kids what they need to do that works and what doesn't work. And so I'm really, really honored to have my friend and safety expert, Jason Brick. We're going to be talking about what we need to do to keep our kids safe in the event of a shooting. All right, so welcome Jason Brick, safety expert, and you have your own YouTube channel, Safe, Safest Family on the Block, uh, where you interview so many different experts in all different areas of safety. And one of the things that you know about uh, because of this work, because of your experience, is how to keep a child safe if there is a shooting. So there's a bunch of things I want to ask you, but welcome, Jason. And um, Leah, let's talk. I'll, I'll kind of give you the mic, if you will, and let, you know, what do you have to say? So, I mean, first of all, it's always good to see you, but it's such a yeah. sad and frustrating and tragic and horrible reason for us to be talking today. Mm. And you know, I have some videos on my channel where I interview people who teach shooting survival. And every time one of these comes up, I just keep thinking how awful it is that it remains relevant. Um, you know, it's bad news all the way. And one of the, it's not even right to call it good news or a silver lining, but one of the things that has come up is this has been going on long, so long now with so much frequency that we actually know what works and what doesn't work. Okay. Okay. And now can I ask you yeah. just in general, are we talking mm -hmm. about what works in a school environment or are we talking about what works in a mall in a parking lot? Like, is this overarching or is it specific to the location? So the, the general concepts remain the same, although the populations okay. are different, right? Where if there's a mass shooting at a military base, the people who are there are going to make that a very different experience than a mass shooting in an elementary school. Right. Okay. For various reasons, but the overarching what works, what doesn't work is pretty well known at this point, even though it's very frustratingly not as commonly part of policy as one might have hoped. Mm. Okay. Okay. So mm. let's talk about what mm. works. Let's talk about what doesn't. Okay. So let's start at the very top level. What doesn't work is saying something snarky on social media and then not doing anything until the next time there's a shooting. Mm. Um, what does work is, if we care about this, and we should all care about this, is finding out what your local representatives' voting records are on this topic. And I'm not, I'm not interested in your politics. Whatever your politics are, you should know who, who is representing you, what they are doing about it, and hold them accountable. Mm. At the top level, that's something we need to do. But the next step is then, as parents, we need to know what the school policies are. We need to know what the school trainings are. For example, a lot of schools have what's called ALICE training. And ALICE is an acronym that stands for five steps that the teachers take. And it sounds good and looks good on paper. And this is important. It's something that they can say if there's a lawsuit. That, well, we trained everybody in ALICE, so we did everything we could. However, the ALICE system is based on um, documentation and reporting not on keeping an individual student safe. So it protects the school from a lawsuit, oh my but doesn't protect your child in the moment. Okay. Okay. And so, so know that, right? Yeah, so know yeah. that, that mm -hmm. that's just mm -hmm. hot air basically. Yeah. If you ask them and they say, Oh, we're all trained in Alice. Okay. Yeah. And it's understanding that most of the institutions in North America are about account. Um, protection from lawsuits in their mm -hmm. policies, not the protection of an individual. Mm -hmm. And that means that the responsibility for safety in the moment is on our children and on us to teach our children. Um, I'll tell a very specific situation that's changing in two weeks when my son, my youngest son graduates from grade school and moves on to another school. 
-hmm. in our city, uh, the instructions for teachers in a school shooting or other lockdown situation are identical from building to building. And that's, you know, you lock the door, you turn off the lights, you be quiet. This particular school, unlike any other school in the district, has large sliding glass doors to the outside in every classroom. Mm. Which means that closing the door to the leads to the hallway and then just kind of sitting down and hoping for the best is really useless. Right. So as soon as my youngest was um, big enough to successfully outrun a teacher, <laughs> his job, if a, if a lockdown happened, was to open that, <laughs> open that door, run off a of campus, and get to our house that's two blocks away. Right. Okay. You know, I, I gave my child permission to keep himself safe even when teachers or the administration can't. Wow. Okay. Because that and, does seem like pretty, uh -huh. um, pretty commonsensical to open the doors and get the heck out, but you'd never one would know. think, you'd yeah, one know. would think, but they have right. a, they have a policy that, you know, arguably works. A lot of our schools have, you know, that, that almost prison architecture that a lot of high schools and middle schools have where it's a closed room with a narrow window and a door made out of steel. Mm -hmm. And so in those rooms, closing that door, locking the door, barricading that door isn't a bad idea. But in this other school, there's got a you know, little accordion yeah. vinyl dividers and literal glass sliders like you have to your back patio. It's a terrible idea. Right. And so the thing that's the things that take apart from that are, first of all, as a parent, it's our job to know what is the policy. Yeah. And to ask the principals, when was the last time your staff drilled on that policy? Mm -hmm. uh, who's teaching that policy when, you know, find out what their certifications were and then doing research. Like if they say that they know Alice, okay, fine. You've got some um, documentation and protection from lawsuit, but what are you doing for my kid? And find out what are the other policies, find out what they are, analyze them realistically with what's happening in the school. And in terms of architecture, in terms of school staff, you know, if you got, if you've got a staff, uh, somebody on staff at that school, you know, I do not advocate for arming teachers, but a lot of schools have a couple of veterans in there who, you know, they, they went to Iraq, they went to Afghanistan, they came home, they used the GI bill to get their teaching certificate and they went on. That's I'm much more confident in a school that's got a couple of those people running around than okay. a school that does not, even mm -hmm. though, you know, you arming teachers is a really bad idea. Uh, but having a couple of people who have a little combat experience could make the difference. Mm. Um, okay, that's 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 really mm -hmm. good. So so uh, so really, parents mm -hmm. need to yeah. ask the school what is their policy. Know that mm -hmm. Alice is is not necessarily going to help their child. Um, mm -hmm. Ask them: Have they done drills? When was yeah. the most recent mm -hmm. drill? What is the certification mm -hmm. audit? Yeah. Uh, and ask: Hey, do you have any veterans? Yeah. Or get to know are, the school. Very well trained. You know. Yeah. You know, uh, I've got a I've got a program that I'm putting together now about uh, the ten least exciting things you can do to keep your kids safe, because you know <laughs> karate class and time on the range is fun, right? Right, uh, and one of them is volunteer at your school. You yeah. get to know the staff. You get to know the layout. Um, and one just thing about the drills: ask how often they drill the kids, but also ask how often the teachers drill without the kids, because if you're drilling properly for a lockdown or other violent scenario the teachers should be doing exercises that the kids should not see the teachers doing. Hmm, okay. You know, the, for example, uh, my favorite uh, school shooting survival class that I've seen includes things like um, how to beat the tar out of somebody with a fire extinguisher. Hmm. And what they do, because a lot of schools won't, you know, this guy, this guy would kind of like to arm teachers, unfortunately, but um, he says, you know, just put a fire extinguisher in every room. They should have them anyway. Mm -hmm. And there, and you think about this kid, this 18 year old from last week getting blasted in the face with the, with the stuff from a fire extinguisher and then hit in the face with a fire extinguisher while blind is going to really decrease his ability to hurt other people. Okay. okay. But that's not something that a teacher is going to think of doing and do successfully if they haven't practiced it. Yes. yes. And, and they, and it's totally inappropriate for them to practice that in front of their students. 
Okay. Okay. Yeah. And, and, mm. you know, you and I have talked many times before yeah. we always bring up fire extinguishers yeah. incidentally. and, <laughs> uh, and, and you do say that, mm. uh, you know, as a fire extinguisher is about to be expired as they yeah. all do to use that, to put out a fire, to play, play mm. using air mm. quotes, play with it. Um, so that, you know, how to use one. I have never used one, Jason, even though I shouldn't tell you that because you're going to be mad at me, but I, I, well, I have never used one it's coming and... on. It's coming on to the independence days and the, uh, the birthday for your country too. Um, yes. <laughs> firework season is the best time to go ahead and practice with a fire extinguisher. So true. So true. Okay. Mm-hmm. So, so that is great yeah. now. Okay. Mm-hmm. So um, I want to, mm-hmm. I want to look at this in terms of a classroom, right? So yeah. what, what should, should we be doing? What should our, okay, sorry, mm-hmm. I got to start that over, but you know mm-hmm. what I'm talking about yeah. for our kids, what should they do? What shouldn't they do? Okay. So again, and this, this there's age appropriate things here, you know, what we're going to teach course. our kindergartner to do is going to be very different from mm-hmm. what we're going to tell our high school senior who's got a good shot at the wrestling championship for the state. Those okay. are two very different people. Yeah. But unfortunately, the, we have to talk about the five-year-old and the 15-year-old. Yeah. It's just sick. But exactly. It is. Real. It is. I I'm at a loss for words about how we ended up here. Um but there's a common phrase you hear and a lot of the um uh, acronym trainings work off of this baseline, this foundation. They even made a really bad movie a couple years ago about it called a run, hide, fight, Okay. which is run away. If you can't run away, hide. If you can't hide, fight. Okay. Um, there are some serious issues with this um, that we'll talk about a little bit, but the, con- the basic concept is the, base- is the backbone of your lockdown principles, right? Mm-hmm. Where you run to your class with your teachers, teacher shuts the door, locks the door. Um, if they, if there are windows, they put a covering over it and everybody gets quiet and turns off their phones. That's your hide. Mm-hmm. And then if the person comes into the room, in theory, you fight. Although that often breaks down in the middle schools or in the schools, just because I like the fact that our teachers aren't particularly um, have <laughs> combat minded. I think it's good. I don't want that temperament in the schools as a general rule. But mm-hmm. that's the theory, run, hide, fight. Okay. Uh, the issues with those are they're bad words to choose. Like run doesn't have any idea about, tell you about where to run. Mm-hmm. And running away also has a strong um, psychological factor. It puts you in the wrong mindset. Where uh, the person that I trust the most, a fellow named Alan Burris, um, he, wants, he uses the term escape. Mm. You're running with intention. Running with escaping in mind. Yeah. You're running with the mind of escape and getting out of there, getting safety as quickly as you can. Mm. You're not just running in a, in a a general direction. And sometimes escape doesn't mean running. There was that just heartbreaking story about the girl. I think she was a second grader who put blood from her friend on herself and laid very still, Mm -hmm. which I, um, I heard that story. I need a minute, but, um, yeah. that is a form of escaping if you cannot run away. Mm-hmm. And so it, using the word escape puts a little more intelligence and a little more mm-hmm. goal-orientedness to the idea of getting away from a shooter. And this is true of school shootings. This is true if you're in a mall. This is true if you're at a concert and you right. escape. Okay, I like that, yeah. You don't just run, you escape. Escape, and okay. as And you know, that's one of the things I've taught my kid but with the realities of his school. You know, you, you escape. And that, that means escaping your teacher because your teacher, although they have your best interests in mind, have received bad training. Get out that door, run home. I'm two blocks away. And, mm-hmm. you know, and okay. that's the first thing to escape. Don't just run, escape. And if that means running, great. If that means running, then stopping and taking stock, then running some more, then stopping and taking stock. Okay. okay. Um, but escape, don't just run. Okay. And then the second one they say is to hide. Okay. And again, hiding is a very passive thing to do. And it's a, it also, it messes with your mindset. It's not a survival mindset thing. There's Mm -hmm. fear in hiding. There's helplessness in hiding. So Alan uses, and he's not the only one who uses this, but he's the guy I learned it from. Uh, Deny, deny the bad guy access to you. 
Okay. So you don't just shut the door and lock it. You shut the door and barricade it. Okay. Um, in the, the Virginia Tech shooting, one of the rooms was denied to the, to the shooter by, it was an apparently empty room. So they shut the door and it lo- opened inward. And one student lay down with their feet against the door. Another student lay down with his feet against that student's shoulders. And they daisy chained it all the way to the other wall. Wow. And that door wasn't going anywhere. Wow. And you can do that with a line of desks. You can do that with a line of kids. You know, make sure you lay down flat because, but, of course. you know, you're not just hiding. You are denying access to you by with mm-hmm. everybody you need. If you just put a big pile of furniture in front of the door, if the door opens outward, there are things you can do with a belt. Uh, there are things you can do with a, a rope. Or you can also just pile a bunch of, bunch of stuff in front of the door. Mo- mm-hmm. One thing we know is in most cases, if you make it inconvenient to get into a room, the shooter will just move on to the next room mm. because they, they know they're on a timeline and they're, they're in a very specific um, mental state where they're going to be looking for easy targets. Yeah. Yeah. And I would, so, I, yeah, I can see that. And so you deny them access. You don't just hide. You deny them access to you with every tool available. Okay. And another thing to keep in mind is uh, it's not a straight line. You don't, Run until you can't run, and then that's where you're stuck for the rest of the thing. You could run, close a door, deny them access to that door, and then figure out a way to get out of that room. Okay, and right. Keep going. Right. right. So it's not linear. It's not. Oh, okay. You didn't. I couldn't escape. Uh, so now mm-hmm. I deny access. Uh, yeah. I deny ac- I, I I escaped. Mm-hmm. Deny access. Now I'm escaping again, and then deny access. Exactly. Right. Gotcha. 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 Exactly. Okay. And that's and that's another place where that model of run, hide, fight doesn't work because it doesn't, it, it yeah. implies that you can't go back. And yeah, right. so you run into a room, you shut that door, you lock that door, you slide, a, you slide a desk in front of it. And then you see the, and then you find out where the windows are and you keep going. Right. That's a much, it's a much smarter, much better plan. Mm-hmm. Um, if your kids are in a school with two floors and if you're talking about your office, you're talking about where you work, anything like that, it's worth finding out what's, what's the fire plan. Is there a fire ladder in the right. second floor rooms? Um, how do, how do they propose students get out of second floor rooms in, the, in an emergency? You know? yeah. yeah. And there's, if it's on the second floor, there's nothing wrong with just tying a bunch of jackets together and going for it. <clears throat> but, okay. you know. but so that's deny rather than hide is deny. Okay. <clears throat> and then the final one, instead of fight, it's attack. And again, mm-hmm. that's just the psych- psychological value of attacking rather than defending, rather than fighting, where if the bad guy's on the other side of the door and they seem intent on going in, you gather as many resources as you can, and that's people who are willing to fight, people who are capable of fighting, improvised weapons in the room, and you be ready. And the second that person is visible, yeah, you go as hard as you can because you are literally fighting for your life. Yeah. You know, and a kindergartner is not appropriate to get involved in that. Yeah. But a kindergartner can hand their teacher a pair of scissors. A kindergartner can turn on the coffee machine. If there's a coffee machine in your, Mm -hmm. in your teacher's room, that can, that can be a game changer. Wow. Um, You know, you just, you get that as hard as you can and then you splash it in, uh, in the guy's face. There's, you know, so even a kindergartner, although it's, it breaks my heart to live in a world where I have to talk to a five-year-old about improvised weaponry in case somebody comes into their school with the intent of harming them. Um, We live in that world. So my five-year-old should know how to, how to survive in this world. Mm -hmm. But that idea, and, you know, as you get older, even, even sixth graders can, you know, you get a couple of the larger sixth graders to go for the legs while the teacher goes for the torso. And that's, that's an old trick that's worked for a very long time. They used to use it, to, you know, with urchins in London, where a couple of small kids would come in behind the kneecaps or in front of the kneecaps while the adult-sized person attacked them. It's, it worked then, it can work now. Mm-hmm. But that idea that, so that final thing is to have a plan and then execute that plan immediately as soon as the bad guy's visible. And right. it's, again, terrible to talk about that in high school, in, in schools, a little more entertaining in some ways is to think about it in high school. If, you know, the people you're thinking about is half the football team, 
Um, yeah, right, right. You know, but you've got some strong, able bodies is, is really yeah. what you're saying to, yeah. to actually attack. Mm-hmm. So it's escape, yeah. deny access and attack. And yeah, that's escape, deny include- attack. Yeah. Escape, deny, attack. And mm-hmm. instead of run, hide and fight. Right. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. And escape, deny, attack can come in mm-hmm. different yeah. order. Right. Or can be go back. It's often or, escape, yeah. deny, escape, deny, escape, escape, deny, escape, escape, deny, escape. Yeah. And then you you enter there. Oh, shit. Because you can't escape anymore. And yeah. then attack. But in right. most cases, if you're thinking if you're thinking and moving intelligently through us through a series of escape and denies because most of these events are over in five minutes okay um you're going to be well and truly safe right okay is that true really Mm. they're they're that fast yeah most of them are in under five minutes under Um, five minutes okay that's really good Mm. information i think to know Mm. that um, I'm sure it feels like yeah. five years, but uh, it does. And then you get situations like last week where it was mm-hmm. more than an hour. Um, Unbelievable. I, you know, I, speaking I, of holding adults accountable. <laughs> well, and, and, you yeah. know, of course we're talking about Valdi, Texas and yeah. uh, this, this, this will be on YouTube for a long time. So just in case anybody doesn't know what mm-hmm. we're talking about, um, which is, you know, 10 years from Sandy Hook. And I mean, I mm-hmm. remember my kids were little yeah. when Sandy Hook yeah. happened and I was just devastated because I could imagine that. And it changed me. It changed yeah. the way I dropped my kids off and I live in Canada and mm-hmm. access to weapons is not easy. And it, it doesn't matter. Like, and, and my youngest son said to me mm-hmm. <clears throat> literally the other day after this happened, he said, you know, when I go into a room, I'm always looking for the exit mm-hmm. because it's on his mind. Yeah. That's not fair. It's not fair. It's and not. it's the reality. Right. And mm-hmm. actually that's kind of like good for him that he's kind of thinking that way yeah. in a way. Um, but mm-hmm. um, yeah. Okay. So um, I don't know if you have anything else to add, but I just want to recap mm-hmm. what you said, <clears throat> right. You know, first talk to your local representative, right. Find out mm-hmm. how they're voting uh, and hold them to account right? Mm -hmm. Um, Talk to your school. As parents, we need to be doing this. We need to know what's going on at school. Don't be afraid of being a pest. Don't be afraid of being that mom or that dad. Who cares? It's about your kid's Mm -hmm. safety. Do it. We have to. Um, Find out what they've got. Alice training is not enough. That's really just protection from lawsuits. What is their policy? Are they doing drills with and without the kids? Um, do they have a certification? What is the certification? Who taught it? Know, you know, yeah. who that is. Um, and then do you have vets, uh, veterans at the school? Do you know, is there anybody with yeah. any kind of combat training or any kind of military training like that yeah. and volunteer at the school? So, you know, the school yeah. inside and out, and then yeah. do not listen to the run, hide and fight, do the escape, deny attack, what else have you got to add before we? So there's only two up, yeah. two things that I think are important. One is you know just underscoring the power of being present at the school. You know I'm a I'm an enormous pain in the ass at my <laughs> kids' school, enormous. <laughs> but also I coach the wrestling team, I coach the chess team. Right. Uh, the end of year gift for my kids' teacher is a massage a massage session. Um, the principal gets a bottle of scotch for me every year. Um, I'm I'm there all the time. I love and it. So if it's time, if I feel like I have to be assertive, I have no, I have no compunctions doing it. And also I reading between the lines, I think that the school, the uh, staff takes extra steps because they know I'm going to show up and not leave until there's a solution. Mm. Um, you know, one of the things is if you feel like your school staff is not keeping your kids safe, make keeping your kids safe less inconvenient than not keeping your kids safe. Oh, I love it. And that applies to shooting policy that applies to bullying that Mm -hmm. applies to the bus ramp that applies to a bus driver that applies to staff background checks, all of those things. Mm -hmm. Just give great value to the school in whatever way you can. Yeah. And make it very clear that you will be a huge pain in the ass if you have to. Right. Um, Good. And the second one, I, uh, the thing you mentioned about your child, about how he's looking for exits. Mm. Um, it's not never too early to talk to our kids about safety. And that's whether we're talking about safety from crime and violence, or whether that's fire safety or whatever. Uh, 
it's my understanding, my belief that by the time a child is old enough to understand the concept, they've already thought about it. Mm-hmm. And so you can either avoid that thing because you don't want to scare them, in which case they're mm-hmm. thinking about it without your guidance, or you can talk mm-hmm. to them about it and show them you're on the case. The mom and dad have been thinking about this, that we have a plan, and this is how you can participate in that plan. I love that. I love that. In fact, um, you'll, you'll see a video, Mm -hmm. uh, about how to talk to your kids about hard things that, Mm -hmm. um, that is previous to this, where I talk about how to talk to your kids to keep them safe, because it is our job as parents to keep them safe. It is our job to know the Mm -hmm. school's policy so that when things like this happen, which inevitably, Mm -hmm. unfortunately they do, we can say, well, here's what mom and dad are already doing. Here's what, you know, here's what we're doing as your parents to make sure that you're Mm -hmm. safe safe and it's okay to have feelings. Mom's sad about it too. I'm sad because I care about other people. I'm sad because, you know, so in other words, it's okay to have feelings about it, but, Mm -hmm. but be in control of the information, be in control of what you know and what the plan is. Right. And talk to them about it. I I completely agree with you. Mm -hmm. And so in terms of other resources, I do have an interview with Barbara Rubel, who's a thanatologist who is a suicide uh, expert. She's also um, um, an expert in death, dying and bereavement, which is what a, than- a thanatologist is. And then I do have a, a video on how to talk to your kids. So all of that is really helpful. You have um, uh, the safest family on the block is your YouTube mm-hmm. channel, but you also yes. have a safety plan too for, for mm-hmm. families. Um, do you want to talk for a moment about that? Sure thing. Your we got a couple. Blueprint? The, there's yeah. the one that um, that your members can get for free which is oh, the right. safe home blueprint that yeah. um, is uh, it literally it's a workbook that walks you through going from your house, from the perimeter to the interior um, and looking for where it's safe and where you can um, bump up the safety. Mm. And again, folks, all of your members get a, get a copy of that for free on your website. Yeah. Um, at uh, parent dash. Yeah. yeah. I'm also releasing a um, course on how to build and negotiate a phone safety contract with your tween or your teen. <laughs> <laughs> Good one. Um, okay. Which is, uh, and it sounds like you were thinking of a different one, though. I got so much going on right now. No, and no, I, 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 sorry, and I've been I was thinking ahead a lot. Uh, no, yeah, well, <laughs> wrestling, uh, that'll do yeah. that to you. Um, no, the mm. um, the safe home blueprint is what I was talking about. Oh, okay. Actually. Yeah, I'm sorry. I, I just, no worries. Off the top mm. of my head, couldn't remember yeah. the exact uh, the mm. words. But that's, yeah, that's, that's the one. Fantastic. Mm-hmm. I mean, uh, online safety is huge. And I think, yeah. you know, our mutual mm-hmm. friend, Gary Questenberry, you know, yeah. who has spotting danger before it spots your kids, your teens. Mm-hmm. Um, he talks about, you know, not being a soft target, be a hard yeah. target. Right. And mm-hmm. I think that is huge. Situational awareness is huge. Yeah. And uh, the thing is, is that when you, you know, our brains will go blank unless we practice mm. these things, unless we know these things. And, yeah. and I know that that's, that's a tough thing, right? You don't want to practice because you don't want to talk about it. You don't want to bring it up. You mm. don't want to think about it. And then at the same time, if it happens, mm. then you're going to be much more ready. Yeah. So I know it, it's sickening. I, I saw mm. a post with, you know, with a dad saying, I didn't know my kids even trained for this and I'm sick. Of yeah. That. Well, yeah. Nice. And, and. Mm. Yeah. You, you got to remember there's a phrase in tactical circles, which is People never rise to the occasion. They sink to their level of practice and training. Oh, okay. Well, those are good words. Under stress, that's that's something to remember. Um, One of my mentors, an an uncle of mine who was uh, in the Marines his whole life, uh, always Mm -hmm. used to say that a plan you don't rehearse is not a plan. It's a wish. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, just one other thing to put on that with our kids, especially younger kids, is we can practice these in the forms of games. Uh, uh, Gary Quesenberry's book, uh, Spotting Dangerous Forest Spots Your Kids, is an excellent guide to gamifying and making fun, building the awareness skills and the athletic skills that your children might need to keep themselves safe. One of my favorites is you can do this with even little ones, toddlers. Um, just play count the doors. Mm-hmm. So whenever you go go somewhere with them, just say, okay, let's, uh, let's count the doors. Let me know how many doors you spotted while we were in this building. Hmm. and that they practice counting it gives them something to do that's not f- playing around on the phone and they're looking around and they're being aware and then later on that skill translates directly to finding the exits that is very cool and it's you know so there are all kinds of ways that we can practice these skills with our kids in ways that aren't scary but still give them the practice they need to do them under the profound stress that would have to happen in say a lockdown situation right 
Wow. Okay. Well, thank yeah. you so much yeah. for that. And of course, there's more on um, on on your channel. Mm-hmm. And um, I just can't thank you enough for for coming on and talking about yeah. this topic. Thank you. So it's much. always a pleasure to talk to you, despite the fact that in this case, it's really not a fun topic to have to talk about. Yeah. Thank you yeah. so much. I really hope you found this video helpful and what Jason shared as practical and really smart ways to respond in a terrible situation like this. My ask is that you please share this with somebody that you know, maybe many somebodies that you know, so that we can spread this message on how to stay safe. And it's good for our kids and it's good for us as well. So please share. And my channel is all about providing you with the tools and solutions you need to help you parent in today's complicated and modern world. And I'm here to bring you those solutions that you need to parent the best way that you can. And if you're here, I already know you're a great parent because you care enough to watch this and you care enough to want to be the best parent you can be. So in addition to what we've shared in this video, I want to tell you that there's two other videos that you can look at. And the top one is all about how to talk to your kids about tragic sudden death. And the other video below is about how do we move forward? How do we make sense out of senseless violence? And so I really hope you will watch those videos as well, because they will really help you help you to move through this. And again, if this video was of value to you, please do subscribe and like, please comment below. I read all of the comments and will do my best to respond as well. So thank you for watching. And again, thank you for being the kind of parent who wants to be the best parent possible for your kids. Parenting in today's day and age is no joke, and we all need a little bit of help and support.